Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So today we're going to go ahead and go through the options for the new M3. And I'm also gonna talk about how much I got from my Hellcat when I did the trade-in and some of the stuff that I did to kind of help enhance the value of my trade-in and why maybe a trade might benefit you versus trying to sell it yourself, pros, cons, so on and so forth. And then uh, let's go in to the video. GoPro, start recording. All right, so we're kind of kind of followed through on the window sticker. And I'm gonna tell you exactly all the options I've selected that are on this car and how much all of them cost and then the total value of the vehicle. All right, so once again, this is a 2024 um, BMW M3 Competition X-Drive. You know, obviously X-Drive meaning that it's the all-wheel drive version. The MSRP for the vehicle starting off is $84,300. So that's how much the starting price is. The color is Alaman Green, which is a $650 option. Um, it's one of the standard colors. Um, I think only the white, there's like a white version that um, is a zero cost option, but this one's a $650 option. Uh, the interior is Kalami Orange, which is a $2,300 option, but that is for full leather. So it has leather on the dash, um, the stitching, and the, all the seats, everything. So that's the $2,300 option. Then we go into Driver Assistance Pro Package, which has the Extended Traffic Jam Assistant, Active Driving Assistant Pro, which is a $1,700 option. Um, that gives you the ability to, I've, I've at least tried the Active Driving Assistant Pro, and that's the it driving by itself. Um, you do kind of have to keep your hands either by the wheel or on the wheel. Um, I've done it where I've just kept like one finger on the wheel, and it's gone through turns and drove 50 miles an hour, so it's pretty trippy. Um, parking Assistance Package with the Parking Assistant Plus, that's a $700 option. And then the executive package, which I think is a must for these vehicles, um, that's a $1,700 option. So that comes with remote start, heated steering wheel, power tailgate, um, and then the upgraded screen. So the big curved um, screen. So also I got the Steptronic automatic transmission, which is included, no price. Um, the M Driving Professional, which is a $900 option. Uh, I'll go a little bit more in depth into that in future videos, but that gives you the drip analyzer and a couple little extra goodies that come with the car. Um, I got these 826Ms bicolor wheels. So you can, they're kind of dirty right now. So they might look like they're kind of black because of the brick dust, which is killing me already. Um, but these are the bicolor, so it's like a silver and black mix. Um, I did think about going with the all black version, um, but I think this gives it a better look overall. So I kind of went with this version. Um, adaptive suspension is included. The M shadow lights, which is they black out the housing of the lights. So without it, it's like that silverish color. Um, so it kind of gives it a better look of the headlight. So it makes the housing uh, black. That's a $300 option. The M compound brakes, which are the standard brakes, not the carbon ceramics um, with the red brake calipers. Um, those are a no cost option. The comfort access key entry free. The M seat belts. So the M seat belts. So my previous F80, uh, you can only get those seat belts with the competition, like the, the colors on the seat belts, um, if you got the competition package. Uh, now I guess you can get it with all the versions. So um, the carbon fiber trim. So I got the carbon fiber, which is like all in the interior. Um, and that's a $950 option. The front ventilated seats, so that's the cooled seats. That's a $350 option. I got the Iconic Adaptive LED with laser lights. So that's the laser lights in the front. I think is a, really gives it a different look. If you look at 
of M3 with or without, you can really tell a difference. Um, and I have pointed them out before where it's that little blue housing on the front of the lights. The, let's see what else, the drive recorder, which I haven't used yet, but it gives you the ability to drive, I mean, to record while driving. Um, that's a $100 option. And let's see, another cost option is the M Carbon Exterior Package, which is a $4,700 option. That gives you the carbon fiber in the front. Um, it gives you the carbon fiber, the rear spoiler. It gives you the diffuser. Where else does it give you carbon fiber? The mirrors. So it, it does sound like a lot, but if you were to get the ducts, the mirrors, the, the splitter, rear trunk spoiler, and the diffuser in the back, it's going to cost you if it's carbon fiber, carbon fiber, it'll cost you close to four grand just just on that. Um, and then this is M, you know, BMW carbon fiber, which is legit carbon fiber. Um, so I think that's a, a good option. At least it already comes installed. Okay, so and then with the destination charge, you know, get in the car from Germany here, it is a 900 and $95 option, bringing the total price of this vehicle to $100,645. So these are really, really pricey machines. So um, once again, I'll probably, you know, post the, the window sticker, but this is the window sticker. The only thing that, um, I didn't like, so comparing this to the window sticker from my Hellcat was that when I ordered my Hellcat, it actually had my name on it um, on there versus this one doesn't actually have that the vehicle is made for me, which kind of sucks. I like to keep these window stickers. Um, so let's go on to more information. So next we're gonna talk about, and I wrote some little note cards here is the Hellcat. So I purchased my Hellcat in July of 2021, and I paid $78,000 for the car. What I did was I just paid the taxes up front and I didn't finance it. Um, instead of taking the rebate, which at the time, the power dollars were kind of out of the way, so there wasn't that much you know, of rebates or incentives. What I did take though was the zero interest for 72 months um, financing. So I did take that. We kept at the time, you know, interest rates were still kind of low, but they weren't close to 0%. So I took that um, and I financed the car for 78000 What I owed at the time of trade was $42,000. The trade offer that I got for this car, which I got back in September of this year was $75,000. So um, what happened was I took the car in when I ordered this car, which I'll, I'll probably talk about the process of ordering this car in another video. But when I went to go order this car, I also got the, the Hellcat appraised and they gave me a ballpark figure. I asked them, I was like, hey, you know, this car can take a couple months to get here. Am I, is this gonna be like a locked in figure? So what they wanted me to do was, they said, did I have a lot of the stock parts? At the time, I still had, I had Belgian wheels, the car was on bags, um, I had some other mods on the car, and I told them I had, I had all the stock parts. So they said, we'll give you $75,000 if you could bring back this car, um, you can drive it, put miles on it, so on and so forth, but just bring it back with some of those stock parts installed. Okay, so, and we'll give you $75,000. So with that being said, um, I had, if I, when I brought the car back, I did get the $75,000 and I had $33,000 in equity, which I basically went ahead and put it as a down payment for this car. Um, and how I did that was, so if some of you follow the channel, you know I have, was on airbags, I was on an airlift suspension system. So what I did was I found a shop that did airlift and 
worked out a deal. I said, hey, you put my stock suspension back on, I'll sell you the airlift system, um, you know, discounted price, so you can install it on another vehicle, and basically don't charge me anything for swapping out the suspension. So that was number one. And then my stock wheels, I actually had got them powder coated, um, like a, a dark granite color, and I ended up selling those, right? So I sold those close to 1500 bucks. And then what I did was I found somebody else that had a Challenger and I sold them my Velgen wheels. And what I did was I took the difference. So I said, trade me your stock Charger wheels or Challenger wheels, which are basically the same wheels. And plus, you know, I think it was like 1200 bucks or something like that. I paid $2,300 for those wheels. So basically I got that money back that I paid for those Velgen wheels. And I put those stock Challenger wheels on my Hellcat. I ended up selling both pairs of wheels. I uh, made some money plus the money I made from the air suspension. And then I sold a couple little uh, things. I think I had a ghost controller um, and some other like goodies that I you know, wanted to take off the car uh, just to sell because I knew I wasn't going to get any money. And that's the key is when you trade in these cars, if you can put the car back to stock and sell some of your stock parts, you'll make at least some of that money back that you spent. You're not going to get everything back because the dealership, they don't care. You got a pulley, you got this, you got that. Unless you're selling the car outright to a person that knows what they're buying, uh, you're not going to get any of that money back. So that's why I try to put the car back to stock as much as I could. And then while doing that, I sold those parts. So I don't even have any more parts left. I sold basically everything that I, I took off the car. Uh, I did leave maybe, I left the pulley because I didn't want to have to mess with the tune and so on and so forth. So that was still on the car. Uh, but for the most part, a lot of the little parts that are like bolt-ons that doesn't affect, didn't affect the tune, didn't do anything crazy, I, I was able to take it off and then uh, sell it. So with that being said, um, you know, in total, selling all those parts, I made close to $5,000. So I used that toward the deal as well. And let's go into the, the price for the BMW. So as I mentioned, the price for the BMW came out to $100,645. Uh, because, so this is the, the one thing you also have to remember is, yes, um, someone did want to buy my Hellcat for $80,000, right? So it was about $5,000 more than what the dealership uh, wanted to give me. But the problem is buying a $100,000 car and if I wasn't going to trade anything, you'd have to pay taxes on the $100,000 car. So what that means is that 8.25% of taxes that I was going to pay was going to be $8,000 in taxes. So me selling the car for $80,000 um, to just get $5,000 more, but then in fact paying, you know, $7,000 or $6,500 more in taxes, it, it, didn't, it wasn't a benefit. So I had to sell the Hellcat for at least $82,000 to make a profit. And I couldn't get anybody to buy it for more than 80. And that was, I think the one, the highest price I got was about 80,000. And I almost thought about doing just so I could have the cash. Cause you know, you drive around nervous. You don't know what's going to happen until this car came in. So that's why I said, okay, I'm just going to, you know, not baby the car, but make sure I pay attention to what I'm doing. Don't do anything crazy until I could trade it in. So, um, on top of the price of the car, this, this car did come with a low jack system, which, you know, I fought to, to take it off. I didn't want it, but it was kind of like one of those, hey, this is a mandatory dealer thing. And I, because this car is like one of those cars, you have to wait for it to come. And when it says there, you, it's hard to say, ah, oh, I'm going to walk away. And then they could just sell it to somebody else. So I said, all right, let's leave the low jack on there. So, but I did get a $500 um, dealership discount. And I did get a $1,500 military discount. Plus, I put a $1,000 deposit to order the car. So all in all, um, that was $3,000. So after taxes, which were because I traded in the Hellcat. Um, so what happens is that $75,000 um, is minus from the $100,000. So I'm really only paying taxes on the $25,000, which is what the car was worth uh, tax-wise. And I, it was only about tax title license. It was a little bit over 2100 bucks. 
So at all in all, after the discounts and taxes included and everything, the new price of the car was one hundred and one hundred thousand three hundred. So basically almost the same as what it was at, you know, with all the options and stuff. But that's after the taxes. That's after um, that add on. So it came out to a hundred thousand even. And then minus my trade for thirty three hundred bucks. I financed this car for sixty seven thousand um, dollars. So I'm happy that at least I was able to finance it for a lot less than what the car is actually worth right now, I guess you can say, because um, that's the last thing you want to do is trade in a vehicle and um, when you walk out the dealership, the car is already worth a lot less than what you owe or whatever you financed. So that's what I wanted to make sure. So obviously, um, you can't even really look up the 2024s yet. So I did it kind of with a 2023 and they're going for 80 something thousand, like 82 something. I'm, and I'm saying you just trade selling outright. I think it was like 86. So you figure I'm already at 67 and this is a 24. So it's a little bit more um, pricier, I guess you can say. So that's some of the info on the trade. So just remember, if you're going to sell your car, um, if you can get a good value, you need to make sure you're paying attention to Okay, how much is the dealership going to give me and what is the tax difference between, okay, yeah, I can get more outside, but what is the tax savings? It can, should I just trade it and then I can make that difference in taxes um, so that way you're financing less or is what you can actually get for the vehicle a lot more so then you're like, hey, um, I think it's more beneficial for me to go out there and just sell the car outright. Um, so let me know what you guys, if you guys have any questions on the car, so on and so forth. And, uh, with that being said, um, another video to come in the next couple days, I'm going to be taking the car in, um, to get rechecked for the PPF. And then once it comes back, we'll start installing some of the modifications that we got and we'll go from there. So. With that being said, if you guys got any questions, make sure you guys drop a comment, question, anything. Let me know. I'm an open book, so I'll, I'll provide whatever information you guys need, as long as it's not super, like, all up in my business. Uh, but just general information, yes, I'll provide that. So with that being said, uh, stay tuned, stay safe, stay blessed. Out.